March 20th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Deuteronomy chapters 5 and 6 from the Old Testament Then Moses called all the people of Israel together and said to them, Listen, Israel, to the statutes and ordinances that I am about to deliver to you today. Learn them and be careful to keep them. The Lord, our God, made a covenant with us at Horeb. He did not make this covenant with our ancestors, but with us, we who are here today, all of us living now. The Lord spoke face to face with you at the mountain from the middle of the fire. I was standing between the Lord and you at that time to reveal to you the message of the Lord, because you were afraid of the fire and would not go up the mountain. He said, I am the Lord your God. He who brought you from the land of Egypt, from the place of slavery, you must not have any other gods besides me. You must not make for yourself an image of anything in heaven above, on earth below, or in the waters beneath. You must not worship or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. I punish the sons, grandsons, and great-grandsons for the sin of the fathers who reject me. But I show covenant faithfulness to the thousands who choose me and keep my commandments. You must not make use of the name of the Lord your God for worthless purposes. For the Lord will not exonerate anyone who abuses his name that way. Be careful to observe the Sabbath day just as the Lord your God has commanded you. You are to work and do all your task in six days. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. On that day you must not do any work, you, your son, your daughter, your male slave, your female slave, your ox, your donkey, or any other animal, or the foreigner who lives with you, so that your male and female slaves, like yourself, may have rest. Recall that you were slaves in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord, your God, brought you out of there by strength and power. That is why the Lord, your God, has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother just as the Lord your God has commanded you to do, so that your days may be extended and that it may go well with you in the land that he is about to give you. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not offer false testimony against another. You must not desire another man's wife, nor should you crave his house his field, his male and female servants, his ox, his donkey, or anything else he owns. The Lord said these things to your entire assembly at the mountain from the middle of the fire, the cloud and the darkness with a loud voice, and that was all he said. Then he inscribed the words on two stone tablets and gave them to me. Then when you heard the voice from the midst of the darkness while the mountain was ablaze, All your tribal leaders and elders approached me. You said, The Lord our God has shown us his great glory, and we have heard him speak from the middle of the fire. It is now clear to us that God can speak to human beings, and they can keep on living. But now, why should we die? Because this intense fire will consume us. If we keep hearing the voice of the Lord our God, we will die. Who is there from the entire human race who has heard the voice of the living God speaking from the middle of the fire as we have and has lived? You go near so that you can hear everything the Lord our God is saying, and then you can tell us whatever he says to you. Then we will pay attention and do it. When the Lord heard you speaking to me, he said to me, I have heard what these people have said to you. They have spoken well. If only it would really be their desire to fear me and obey all my commandments in the future, so that it may go well with them and their descendants forever. Go and tell them, return to your tents. But as for you, remain here with me, so I can declare to you all the commandments, statutes, and ordinances that you are to teach them, so that they can carry them out in the land I am about to give them. Be careful, therefore, to do exactly what the Lord your God has commanded you. Do not turn right or left. Walk just as he has commanded you so that you may live, that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land you are going to possess. 
Now these are the commandments, statutes, and ordinances that the Lord your God instructed me to teach you so that you may carry them out in the land where you are headed, and that you may so revere the Lord your God that you will keep all his statutes and commandments that I'm giving you, you, your children, and your grandchildren all your lives to prolong your days. Pay attention, Israel, and be careful to do this so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in number. As the Lord God of your ancestors said to you, you will have a land flowing with milk and honey. Listen, Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You must love the Lord your God with your whole mind, your whole being, and all your strength. These words I am commanding you today must be kept in mind, and you must teach them to your children and speak of them as you sit in your house, as you walk along the road, as you lie down, and as you get up. You should tie them as a reminder on your forearm and fasten them as symbols on your forehead. Inscribe them on the door frames of your houses and gates. Then, when the Lord your God brings you to the land he promised your ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you, a land with large, fine cities you did not build, houses filled with choice things you did not accumulate, hewn out cisterns you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant, and you eat your fill, be careful not to forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, that place of slavery. You must revere the Lord your God, serve him and take oaths using only his name. You must not go after other gods, those of the surrounding peoples. For the Lord your God, who is present among you, is a jealous God, and his anger will erupt against you and remove you from the land. You must not put the Lord your God to the test as you did at Massa. Keep his commandments very carefully, as well as the stipulations and statutes he commanded you to observe. Do whatever is proper and good before the Lord, so that it may go well with you, and that you may enter and occupy the good land that he promised your ancestors, and that you may drive out all your enemies, just as the Lord said. When your children ask you later on, what are the stipulations, statutes, and ordinances that the Lord our God commanded you, you must say to them, We were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt in a powerful way, and he brought signs and great devastating wonders on Egypt, on Pharaoh and on his whole family before our very eyes. He delivered us from there so that he could give us the land he had promised our ancestors. The Lord commanded us to obey all these statutes and to revere him so that it may always go well for us, and he may preserve us as he has to this day. We will be innocent if we carefully keep all these commandments before the Lord our God just as he demands. God, thank you for everything that you so generously give us. Not just the fact that we wake up in the morning in a warm bed with covers piled over us, that we're able to open our, our closets to tons of clothes and sit there in indecision trying to figure out what to wear that day that we get to take showers with hot water for as long as we want, that we have food to eat for breakfast to nourish our bodies throughout the whole day, and then many of us get to go to jobs uh, or take children to school for educations. Throughout all of this, our bodies are doing all this miraculous things to keep us uh, walking forward, seeing, hearing, tasting, breathing, feeling, God, it's just so amazing, all of the things that you give us that we overlook. And, and in this, Moses is telling them, please do not forget that the only reason you have what you do is because of God. That you need to understand that your houses and your cities and your cisterns and your vineyards and your olive groves, those aren't yours. The Lord who brought you out of Egypt gave those things to you. So today, God, we give you thanks, not just for the big things that we remember to give thanks for, but for all the things in between, the small things that we take for granted that really aren't small things. It's just we're, we've gotten very used to having them. God, let us be intentional today as we walk through our life that is over 
filled with amazing blessings from you simply because of your grace and mercy because you know that we don't deserve <laughs> what you give us in the slightest god thank you so much that we get to hear and read your word whereas in so many places in this in this world we would actually be killed for having a bible in our possession just so many things we take for granted god thank you for all that you've given us in your son's name we pray amen <laughs>